I'm not on my own. I have somebody here with me. Darling. It's <laughs> Susanna! Hello, everybody! It's Susanna! Oh. Susanna! How are you all? It's so lovely to be yeah. here in um, Trini, Trini, kind Trini of land. everything, Trini land. And I've walked in looking like a piece of shit. And of course, I've had John, is it? John, John, lovely the makeup. Lovely John. John, whisk yeah. me over in five minutes. And that's the beauty of my makeup. makeup. You didn't look like this when you walked in. But you know the ironies, take a step back. We literally are both wearing the same outfit. It's so weird. Because we never do that so, in real life. No. Or very occasionally. No. Not much. No, because we never, we don't suit the same people. Yeah, clothes. but we're both wearing a navy top. Navy and, top. Um, and and wide leg jeans. Wide leg jeans. She's finally in wide leg jeans. I've it's always had these for ages. Mm, don't kind of are. So the main really reason to be here, can you budge up so I can show your book? Just no, budget your hand, but keep your whole face inside. You see what I mean? Yes. Is this. It's going to be back to front for some of you. This is Susanna's book. Now, I have... Mark seems I want to go through with her. Mm, she doesn't know what they are. Either on the loo, having a little look. But it's staggering that you've done this book. Thank you. Because you finished something. And well, you've finished. I have written two others. You novels, wrote two others. Yes. And I, if you've read Susanna's other books, After the Snow was her, what do we call it, your... My um, your, um, debut. Debut, her debut novel, beautiful book. And the second book... Uh, Summer in Mayfair. Summer in Mayfair. Hates yeah. the title. But that's just further down, based mm -hmm. a little bit on one is sort of you, you took elements of your daughter and yourself yeah, to create and the character. Yeah, I think you'll find, if any of you have read the first two, you'll find the truth and how my, my life has influenced those two books. Even here. Mm -hmm. Now, in the, the thing I mind. found amazing about this season, and I, the thing is, we haven't had the chance to chat about books. No, you literally so just this published. is cold. So you know what I will tell you, and I just share a lot. But I'll tell you what I want to say, and Imagine I'd never met you before. Mm. What I want to say is, from the outside, lots of people would think you've had a very entitled life and you kind of, you know, you've never spoken about things in your life. And I know even when we worked together for 10 years, you and I shared some things, but you've never shared on a wider group some things, which in here are quite revealing. They're revealing about yourself. They're revealing about life at that time. It's a really incredible snapshot into a life at a time and, and yeah. you've been very very candid like I want to go into bits of the book where I just think your candor mm. really even however well I know you your candor really surprised me like around your father yeah you it's know? funny how because people who know me really really well know me for a long time Elton John being one of them he said I didn't know anything yeah about your life before yeah. you met me but also then there are other people who have read it who you know come from a t completely different background and didn't grow up with privilege mm -hmm. like I did and it's they have all said it's so relatable yeah. and for me I'm more proud of that than anything else because it's ultimately at the end of the day it's about emotions and how we feel so I am the dream team if you're just joining us now yes that is Susanna we can pinch her and she's there so darling what I'm going to do and she's just brought out the most amazing book ready for absolutely nothing I've chosen five things I want to discuss and then we can talk about anything. Okay. Right? But I've even like highlighted okay. them. Okay. So one of the funniest things it in is this book, funny. okay, is that um, is that Susanna had this fabulous nanny who took her to Bieber, uh, Bieber and did all the stuff. With her. So there's, I'm just giving the preamble to the scene. Linda. Linda. Mm -hmm. And and after a while, um, once her parents came back and they discovered uh, the gentleman caller that Linda had and had had three times a week, and they realised she was actually a prostitute. Mm -hmm. And this last little chapter ending I adore. Despite her candlestick profession, my parents were extremely reluctant to let Linda go. I knew both her parents. Mm. She'd been happy to babysit at short notice and took a minimal holiday, so the final decision was a very close call. I think what pushed them over the edge was when I innocently mentioned I'd shared a bed with her and her boyfriend one Saturday under the paisley eider down at her parents' house in Cheam. You were about 10 at the time? A bit younger. A bit younger. Mm. Whilst I don't remember exactly about that weekend, I did go on to develop an extremely <laughs> extreme phobia of feathers. So it's anyone's guess what might have gone on, but that was the 60s for you. I just, I love the flow of that paragraph. I love the kind of profoundness of that paragraph and yet how you wrote it. I really, your writing in this, Susanna, is fantastic. Thank you. It really, really flows. I, I love that. What do you think, anyway? Love the book, So Relatable. Alex Swan is saying, mm -hmm. born the same year, love the same sort of school, married the same year too. Um, wow. Lots of things like that. I was like, yeah. can I go on to another one? Yeah, now? yeah, yeah. Go, go, go. I just love like, because there's some I'm going to ask you about too. Yeah. So this is, um, this is, this I didn't expect, all right? So, so in this book, which is just this wonderful 
uh, roll through life. Suddenly, Susanna wants to become a historian. Okay, so she <laughs> okay, yeah. randomly brings up these things, which actually I thought, I never knew that. So give an example. Susanna is talking about how she used to fake having her period at school so that she could not have to swim when it's cold and horrible. I remember this too. Well, that day. also, all the other, you know, a lot of other girls got their period and I felt ashamed that I hadn't got mine yet. Okay, so, you so it's pretending it. to have my period so that, you because there was that, like those, I don't know if you, you women enough. who are watching, that when you were little, there was kind of like, Girls were, were put into tribes at that age. Those who grew boobs, those who got yeah. their period, and those like me who were weedy little peons yeah. who had nothing. And you hadn't really been And so them. I hadn't had any ticks. I got, had, didn't have my period, so I pretended to have oh. my period. And I'd go around and say, oh, God, I have my period. So Suck that you would thought. feel yeah, more yeah. acceptable. Yeah, she hasn't read that bit. I haven't read that okay. bit. Yeah. I haven't read that bit. Mm. Um, okay. I had, but there's a lot to remember because I've underlined a lot. But the thing that I then loved is... A note on menstruation mythology. Myths surrounding menstruation, this is good for you Poppy to understand because Poppy's also taken comments, are quite fabulous if you're interested in going down a jaw-dropping wormhole. Even now, Yellowstone Park has a page on its website dedicated to whether or not menstruating women might attract or be killed by a bear. One of the chief historical proponents of the dangers of a menstruating woman was a Roman natural philosopher, Pliny. In his naturalist Historia, Pliny gives a number of reasons to be wary of them. There is no limit, he tells us, to the marvellous powers attributed to females. A naked menstruating woman could cause caterpillars and beetles to fall from the ears of corn simply by walking through a field. I just love I know. the fact that you didn't maybe do a history A level and yeah. yet you're just giving us this random but quite interesting well, information. I think what it is, is like, you know, I, whilst I can be a show off, you know, yeah. we're, we're, yeah, but we, you have to be a show off to be on television. But at the same time, it's kind of there's a there's a sort of invisible screen where mm -hmm. you don't have to give so much of yourself. Yeah. And whilst I have been incredibly honest, when bits have got a little bit too close to the bone, or I mm -hmm. find it quite hard to write, I chuck it out with a little fact. So I throw it yeah. back out, okay, out there that's your mechanism. and go into a fun little, mm -hmm. really fascinating, bonkers yeah. um, postscript. Yeah. Because I think for you, some of this stuff has been, shall I tell them or not? So it's interesting at those points, darling. You are, you are, you're the first person who said that, and that's well, because you know, you know me yeah. so well. Yeah. And it, yeah. it was like, I've always said, I never stoop so low as to write yeah. a memoir. I'm gonna now bring something up. I'm gonna go further on the my yeah. initial chapter. But I think, what I found really interesting, because I have been re-watching um, The Crown, and mm -hmm. The Crown, is many people's sense of um, royal historia. Mm -hmm. Because especially in the last 30 years, we kind of, Peter Morgan has kind of rewritten the history books as to characters within the royal family. Mm -hmm. But one character that I think, when I read your book, that he maybe got down to a T, is Lord Snowden. Oh God. Because yeah. in it, you bring out the kind of fact that he was not an easy person, perhaps, to like. And a little bit sort of. No, let's not mince words. Okay, and I'm tell sorry it to me how because I'm still yeah. friends with his yeah. son David. Yeah. But he was a, a vicious individual. Yeah. He really yeah. was. And he, you know, I sat for him. So he, he, I think I don't know how or why he wanted to take my photograph, but he humiliated me in such a passive, mm. aggressive way. And I remember Mary Greenwell, who's a wonderful makeup artist too. She taught Charlotte Tilbury. Um, and she, I need to tell you a story about Charlotte Tilbury too, which her makeup is so shit. I can say this that. Is can, can we just move on? <laughs> and, um, but anyway, so he was like saying to Mary, more makeup, more makeup, put on more makeup, hold your neck up high, you know, just. Yeah. So I was completely unrecognizable mm. by the end of it. And it was, it was cruel, yeah. you know, and I went out and I looked like I could walk straight into a casting for cats or, you know. Okay, just like so not you. It's theater. like you want to remove the you yeah. in the equation. Yeah. I'm going to now, Poppy is looking at all the questions and I know that it's just wonderful listening to Susanna. I want to listen to it all night. But also there's people asking questions. So Poppy, throw in some questions, darling. Okay, so a Facebook comment, so the right camera, yep, has there. asked, what was your favourite chapter to write? Yeah, that's a good one. God, that, I think probably Two Old Queens because it marries the, my, my life at that time in the kind of 80s, where it marries the royal family and my love 
of rock and roll and being a bit of a star fucker, if I'm honest. So you're talking about the Queen and Elton John and the Queen, yeah, yeah, the Queen when um, Elton John first met the Queen Mother, yeah, and um, it was at Royal Lodge and we were staying, and I was so excited because I'd had him on my wall, his posters on my wall, and I remember. Okay, so you were staying with the Queen Mother. I was staying with the Queen and, Mother at and, Royal and Lodge, and so he was coming, and you hadn't met him, and he was okay. at, yeah, he was a guest for dinner, so mm -hmm. I was beside myself, and I remember thinking he came and I literally had to hold myself back from throwing myself at him. And I thought, I kind of brushed past the Queen Mother and I thought, fuck, I'm gonna knock her over. And then I thought, oh God, it doesn't matter. She'll be dead anyway soon. I mean, and I love the woman. Let me tell you that she was such an amazing woman. But what was so charming between the two of them, he sang Blue Eyes to her. Mm -hmm. And Beautiful it was like, she had her little hand on her chest like this. and. She was she was so moved by it, and mm. there was this kind of flirtation. Mm. And then, if you look at that time and and what happened in that instant, it was like Mozart or Be Beethoven going to play at the Royal Court. But because at that time it was Elton John. Yeah, that's I, I love that. I love that story. I'm going to now take you to something you wrote about when Maggie Thatcher, Baroness Thatcher, met the Queen at Balmoral, and Susanna happened to be there when that happened. So I just. What I kind of love is the whole build up to this event, but there's a moment when tea is being served and um, and the queen picks up the brown pot to pour as I held my cup to be filled, as if by magic a redundant Thatcher appeared at her side like a spectre. Let me do that, your majesty. Without waiting for an answer, she put her hand onto the teapot to take its weight, but it offers re unexpected resistance for the queen. I lower my cup a little. Maggie tightened her fingertips around the base and tried once again to take the pot from its owner, but no, she was not mistaken. There was definitely resistance. Evidently, the Queen had no intention of relinquishing the fat brown pot. A further more determined pull from Thatcher was met with an equally resolute hold from Her Majesty. Pete Morgan couldn't write this shit. <laughs> we appeared to have reached a stalemate. I put my cup and saucer quietly back on the table. If this was a film, it would be the closing scene when two adversaries finally came face to face in a big old church or disused meat factory. <laughs> you know, one of them's going to lose, possibly even die. I didn't imagine the Queen was actually going to kill Thatcher. It wasn't the court of Elizabeth I, but it was quite tense, and on it goes. So I just, I mean, I, I love that scene. I'm going to go straight to a little bit but of that you tell me. that's yeah. where, I mean, I'm not going to tell you who won this little, yeah, okay. little battle, yeah. but it was what, there were the two most powerful women at the time, purely and simply fighting over who was going to play mother. So yeah. there are all these extraordinary, you know, my life was a bit like Forrest Gump's. I yeah. met all these incredible people, witnessed all these amazing things. And um, it was just, it's a very extraordinary anecdote, mm. but it's an ordinary truth. I, I don't want anyone to pour my fucking tea and pick up my teapot yeah. when I've got yeah. people at home. What woman does? And yeah. so there were the two most powerful women felt exactly the same. Yeah, and your observational... Um, writing is great. You had a little bit about Maggie. This is just tiny things. It's so, if anyone knew Maggie Thatcher in terms of what they thought of her, but Maggie Thatcher seemed the kind of woman who was only comfortable behind the lectern or the kitchen sink, i.e. telling people what to do or doing it herself. Um, so I just, it, it, it's just little things, but I think what I want to go to next, darling, is, you know, I can identify with this in a different way too, is that you grew up in what to many people was this incredibly entitled world, but you speak really candidly about, you use as an analogy actually, the John Cleese sketch. Mm. And it's about, and I don't have many of you are old enough to know the John Cleese sketch of, you know, I live here and I look down on him and then mm. Ernie he Wise is, or, yeah, or um, Ronnie is going, I live here, but I look down on him. And, and it was that you know that. Yeah, but it was yeah. that sort of placing of where you sit in the establishment. And it's something now that those boundaries are totally broken and there is no sense like there was then of this unseen, this is what I am. So the definition of being defined by, are you upper class, upper middle class, middle class, was an important label for some people mm, then. Absolutely. It's like maybe it, it's nonsense people now, mm. but you were really candid, Susanna, about your dad, what he truly was and what he aspired to be. And it's a very difficult thing because I know how much you loved and worshipped mm. your father and how your mother was the hardest relationship in your life, really. Mm. So just talk a little bit about that dynamic. Well, I think I mean, in writing this book, there are so... It, people say, oh, was it cathartic, la, la, la. And actually, it wasn't at all. 
But what it was, was a series of all these like, oh my God moments. Mm. Oh my God. It was like a discovery. It was like I was writing about someone else. And so with my father, he, he, was, he was part of the mercantile classes and he was very successful and he should have been so proud of that. Mm. But he wanted the kind of aristocratic handle. He wanted to be a sort of no, the kind of income which you didn't earn living the well, life of Well, no, I think he loved working, but it was kind of, he was a snob at the end of yeah. the day. He was a snob. He was, don't get me wrong, he was a lovely man. He was an aesthetic. He was. He gave you so, he taught you so much about aesthetics. I he mean, was you get all your incredible, aesthetics. Incredible, your but he yeah. did, he, he, so I, you know, people say, oh, you, you know, you, I did have a privileged life. I wouldn't say it was entitled, but it was definitely privileged. But my father, I would say we were kind of like upper middle class, but my father aspired to be upper class. Mm. And yeah. that's something I only realized, you know. Just looking from, back from, objectively yeah, yeah, this. and remembering stuff. Yeah. And the fact that I was ready for absolutely nothing, which you were too. Yeah, there, there was that moment yeah. of shape your own future because your parents are not going to suggest it. Yeah. Um, I kind of liked also, you, I think I think you really love the Queen Mother. I mm. feel that, that I can read in this book that intimate relation you had with her where you just kind of, I think she probably had the sense of humour that you got on the most with. You weren't well, actually so much. Well, Margaret too. Oh, both Princess of them. Too. Yeah. Okay, but I just, Very I love this. So. When Susanna goes on the inaugural flight of Concord with the Queen Mother and in the press, this tiny little thing, um, you know, the, the press was saying apparently she had always wanted to bust the sound barrier but was never able to find time to squeeze it in. I took their word for it. She never mentioned it to me. You know, I just I just kind of that quite funny. And then also how you you put things in perspective of, oh, I'm just going to read this and you'll know what I mean. On the basis that a return ticket, talking about the Concord still, from London to New York cost approximately £35,000 in today's money. Concord's customer base effectively began with Elizabeth Taylor and ended with Gerald Ratner. This is a rich jeweller who lost his money, if those of you who live outside the UK are quite notorious. Anyone outside this wealth bracket didn't have a hope in hell of ever seeing the interior of a Concord cabin. Don't worry, I can tell you exactly what it looked like. Far from having the space to accommodate the demands of people absolutely rolling in it, it was like being inside a Havana cigar tube. Personally, I was a bit underwhelmed. It was the same way I would feel about the pyramids on my honeymoon. On the basis of size, seat alone, odd questions, reputation as aviation's greatest innovation. Um, it's just, you know, I like these asides about, yeah. about things. Um, Pop, should we take some questions? Yeah, some so more questions. for people that have just joined, would you just remind us what the book is called? A lot of people remind me of the The book is about. called Ready for Absolutely Nothing. It's a top bestseller at Amazon right now, and long should it it's remain not. so. Um, it's not, it was for a bit. For and well, darling, after it's this not. live, it's going to be, because the yeah. thing is, it's about awareness. And well, it's always also, it's a slow build. You know, it's a slow so build. can you just shut up? No, no, shut up. Really no, shut I'm up. just being honest. Okay. You put your heart no, and soul no, don't, don't bring that Susanna to okay. you. Okay. Bring the Susanna to you, because this is about manifestation. Okay? I get manifestation. All right, so I, I, what I truly feel, and I think Susanna and I are really honest with each other. Yeah, always. You know, is that it's a gripping, fabulous read, which gives you insight into yourself when you read mm. it, because it makes you think, how do I feel? And if you lived in an era when, you know, you were alive in the 60s, albeit the late 60s, mm. it gives you, there are not many references today to remind you of that time and how it formed the person you became as an adult and how long it took to untangle that that kind of formulation mm. to actually find out who you really wanted to be because I think in the era we live in today and many people don't know what they want to be but I think then it's a reason why you and I Susanna did not find success until we were 35 I agree. or I mean, 30 because I we what, just yeah you know didn't have that guidance or that well, we that, weren't even our opinions didn't count and I, yeah. this isn't a poor me you know at all it's just interesting looking back at it and I remember you know I could have gone to university as could you but my dad said to me and I have told this story before but my dad said to me oh darling don't be silly you'd be far better off learning how to make a beef wellington and that that mm -hmm. was he truly mm -hmm. believed that and we were being moulded to become our mothers. And I didn't yeah. want to become yeah. my mother. And I didn't want to become Margaret mm -hmm. Thatcher. And I didn't want to become the Duchess of Rutland. Mm -hmm. oh, yes, but you that, have yeah. to kind of find your own way. Yeah. And we got there. And we got there. That's the thing. So it is, We can you see Susanna now? I'm sorry, because we've got, I'll tell you what we're doing for Instagram there and Facebook there, is we are simultaneously on both. So very quickly, where are our outfits from? Okay, this yes. is where things change, all yeah. right? Okay. This is where... 
my beloved friend has got a, a global conglomerate situation going on and I've just written a book, which I got a very good advance for. Thank you, Michael Joseph Penguin. But I'm wearing a Zara top. Mm -hmm. I'm wearing one of Steen's shirts and I'm wearing Donna Ryder jeans. And yeah. this brooch, yeah. my aunt, who's also my godmother, she gave me a pair of them. Did she? That um, pretty. I was wearing that. When she died. Yeah, That's it's divine. so pretty, yeah. isn't it? So Susanna's brooch, this is where it all goes wrong. She goes, I'm in Zara. Susanna's brooch is worth more than my entire outfit. All right, so that is. Yeah, well, I don't know. Probably. Yeah, probably. This yeah. is Vampire's Wife, but I did get this. No, I love it. It's I got so... it for sixty-four pounds oh, in the sample that? sale. It's oh, usually like three hundred quid and Zara jeans. Yeah. So I'm actually in a sort of outfit under hundred quid, and you're in jeans that cost more than hundred quid. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, so I'm more expensive than you today. You always but have I still been more expensive cheap. than me. <laughs> you always have been more expensive than me. Um. So um. Yes, an evening with Susanna and I would be amusing. Um. There's somebody saying, so I'm going to read those that. It's brilliant, said Jacqueline. Best read in a long time. Been with you and done that too. Fascinating look back. Thank Love you, you. Susanna. Um, uh, where is the time, Trini and Susanna? Marvellous. Where is the time? Meaning yeah. it's like no time is flown by. Can't wait to read it. Audible it. I felt that I was ready for nothing. Hence, I'm in the film business. Very nice. I can only imagine an evening with you both. Sorry. Um, it's so good to see you back now. I remember I wanted to be a record producer, says the Saffron Flower. And one of my friends, a famous producer, said, I would never have a woman in my studio. Oh, my goodness. That was the end of my dream. I mean, so many people. It's just shocking, isn't it? Mm. Um, uh, it's not available on Amazon US. No, it's lots not. Of here, it's darling, not out. Until it's, January. It's being published by Hachette. And yeah. it comes out on January the 31st. And I will be coming out to do a book tour. So okay. I don't know where yet. Fantastic. And it's um, sold in Australia, too. But I don't know when it's coming out there because I know that quite a few Australian friends have bought it. Yeah. So someone said, I can't find it. So mm. I'll try and sort that out for yeah. you guys. Okay. There's some questions about it just getting translated as well. Yeah. Um, I don't know yet. Yeah. It's going okay. to um, the book fair. Fair. book fair. So we'll see which countries buy it. So that's kind of any minute now, the Frankfurt Book Fair. And for those of you in the US who want to know what our outfits cost and convert the money, all you need to know is, unfortunately for us, the dollar and the pound are the same right now. Yeah. used to be that we would, for 90, 80p, get a whole dollar, but now one pound gets one dollar. Yeah. So um, it's exactly the same. It's on parity. Which is just tragic. For That's us. a very big expensive. Word for you, I know it really is, isn't yeah. it? And I don't even know if I said it in the right way. No, you, you did. I did. Thank you. you. Did. Um, Greta, not many women of our age were raised to follow their passions. I'm Italian. It was worse in my country. Oh. All we had to do was to get a job, any job, to get independent from our parents and get married. That's, yeah, yeah, that's true. And also, you had Catholicism to which made to that add in too. that uh, yeah. too as well. Um, I've converted dot. That's fine. Um, uh, let's see. Other questions, darling. Yeah, so everyone's enjoying your trip down memory lane. Yeah. What are your favourite memories of one another? Mm. Oh, so okay. Many. <laughs> oh. I mean, it's so weird because, and, and I do yeah, want so to say weird. something that Trini doesn't really appear much in this book. Yeah. <laughs> because we like... spent our adult life growing, you yeah. know, we spent uh, our adult life in front of the camera, so there's not really so much to say, but I did at the back, I don't know if you've seen it. I haven't read to the end yet, I'm down to where Okay, so, and in. finally, despite Trini Woodall and David Fange being two of my two other husbands, your impact in my world could never have been given the justice it deserves. Our time together is too precious and too private to share. Oh, darling, it's so nice that you read that to me now. Mm. Mm. And it's true. Oh, no. darling. Oh, I just, you know, we, we we've been through, oh, we've shit. been through, don't worry about it, we've been through a lot, a Susanna lot. and I, and a lot in terms of, you know, both of us have been through deaths, recovery, births, moving house, divorce, you know, all the things actually that are main things that shift you in your emotions, we have kind of gone through together. I don't think there's any category we haven't experienced together, one or the other. I mean, my happiest memory is when... I'll never forget it. I, I got pregnant with Esme and we were in the middle of uh, ready to shop our website. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. And um, you were trying to get pregnant and you'd had, you know, it, it hadn't worked for quite a few rounds. And I was so, I just couldn't tell you. I remember sitting in the loo and thinking, what am I going to say? What am I going to say? And then you came bursting into the room. I came out of the loo and you went, I'm pregnant. And I was able to say, I'm pregnant. And we had Cece and Lila three mm. weeks ago. That yeah. was amazing. Yeah, that was That's amazing. such a that precious memory. Amazing. And that was just, I think, because there were 
many times I lost babies when mm. you were pregnant. Well, not with Joe, but with Esme. Mm. And, and, you know, I, I think I lost two mm. when you were pregnant with Esme. So there was that moment when after that we went to, this is a more emotional moment, but after that we went to LA and we were doing, mm. with Diana Sawyer, we were doing the Oscars and we were on the red carpet for ABC. So it was a big gig for Susanna and I. And I was about 16 weeks pregnant and you were a bit further and we were standing on the red carpet and um, I think we both went to the loo, but we had started bleeding, both of us, identical timing. And I remember we had so to finish frightened. the gig and then we went back to the hotel yeah. and I remember calling my obstetrician saying I started bleeding again and I'd had two miscarriages and I literally thought, this is it. And you also, you know, you'd never gone through that miscarriage mm. and for you it was like, oh my God. And then we both got back, and I remember... We were so scared to fly. So remember? scared to fly. So we scared to so fly. We were frightened to yes, fly. I forgot yeah. that. Yeah. And then I remember going straight from the airport to T.O., and I lay down, and he had a portable ultrasound <coughs> machine, and I heard Lila's heartbeat, and it was like, oh, fuck. And every week I had a scan because I just thought I'd lose I'll her. I'll never forget coming to the hospital to see you and Lila. No. Ever with Johnny. I'll never forget. I remember the room you had, like... You know, like all the kind of swanky businessmen in New York, you know, you gotta have the corner office. You had like yeah. a corner room with windows yeah. all around. Yeah. And okay. I mean I spoke, can I just say the differences in sound and I this is the epitome of the difference. So literally I remember going to um Chelsea and Westminster to see Susanna when I don't know which baby Joe. you had. Second no second because I oh, know, I was in the Lindo wing for Joe. No, were, for Ezzy. I, I was okay, which is the one where you were going to have the full enchilada and you just literally, there was no time for the epidural, that was, nothing. That was Esme. That was Esme, yeah. exactly. So, yeah, so, so, so first baby, spend the money. Second baby, Chelsea and Westminster. No, all the way around. Joe, Chelsea and Westminster. Westminster. Uh, second baby, Esme. Um, because they said you're, you weren't too posh to push. No, I just didn't have time. And, didn't and have time. Tio, yeah. we had the same obstetrician yeah, yeah, and yeah. he didn't get there in time. Oh, he was yeah. out for dinner. And so literally, I mean, it's not very, it's not a great compliment to me in the state of my vagina at that time that she came out so quickly. But I mean, yeah. she just... She, she literally, she, she came out and she hasn't stopped. And Steve, she hasn't stopped. my husband, yeah. um, he was there to deliver her. Fantastic. So it was quite amazing. Moment. And then I was the opposite because in this corner room at the Lindo Wing, um, I had lots of flowers. I remember I had lovely creams. And I remember the epidural came out and I said, can you put another one in please? <laughs> because I wanted to, because I'd had a, <laughs> and I was like, I like it. No pain, no gain. You know, I was the opposite. I was oh the opposite. Oh my god! So gosh. funny. I remember Mas. What was her name? Beginning with an A, not Anna. I can't remember her name. She was really famous nurse there, and she went, girl. She was like from the islands. She was from Jamaica, maybe, and she was Agnieszka or something. And she was like, girl, you are the first one who's ever said that to me. <laughs> Brilliant. She was just so funny. Um, oh, so, um, you know, that's little anecdotes from Susanna and I, but we do, we're just about to have dinner tonight now. It's the only reason she bothered to come on now. With eight of our friends that we've all known for many, many years, all going to a different stage of their life. And I think in that room tonight, we'll have friends like Katie, mm. who we've known since, well, I've, I think we've both known yeah. about since we were about 16. Years, yeah. You know, so it's kind of, life is about those friendships with your female friends and... I think that having that is the most important thing in life. It's more important than husbands. I'm going to just state that here. No, you know what? No. I, I mean, if I've said to Steve that he's got to die after me, but if he doesn't, okay. we'll make our relationship official yeah. and go and get married. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. okay. Do you snore though? Oh, yes, yes I, know I do. You do like, so badly. I'll be from the frying they pan have sleep fire. pills for the fat. <laughs> too great. Yes, All right. Fine. So, um, just uh, if you've just tuned in, please join us and watch it from the start because there was nothing we didn't talk about. But it's so lovely, Susanna. Oh, Congratulations God, on this fantastic book. If you've just joined us, Susanna's brought out this week. Susanna Constantine, ready for absolutely nothing. And it's a phenomenal read. Um, it's just great. It's like, I'm so proud of you. Anyway, let's say goodbye. Bye. 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 Thank, Thank you, Poppy. Bye. Thanks, Poppy. Bye.